In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss character formatting. If you'd like to follow along, go to File Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 0604, the hidden power of OpenType, and just click Open. OpenType was a joint venture between Adobe and Microsoft before InDesign came out over 12 years ago. And they had two goals in mind in developing this new format of type. One, they wanted the type files to be cross-platform. So you could take type files from a Mac and put them on a PC, or you could take them from a PC and put them on a Mac, and the open type typefaces would work equally as well on either platform. The next advantage that they were hoping to achieve was they wanted more glyphs in the styles of various typefaces. Before OpenType, PostScript and TrueType typefaces were limited to about 256 glyphs in every style of a typeface. Well, it may sound like a lot, but it really isn't, because there's a lot of glyphs that are just missing for certain usages. Why don't we scroll up to the top and we'll start talking about some examples of open type advantages. Like, for instance, fractions. There's a lot more real fractions that come with each open type typeface. Let me go into my glyphs panel and just click in this type. And you can see if I'm showing numbers in my glyphs panel, it's going to confine what I'm looking at to just numbers. But you can see the number of fractions that there are. Typical typefaces may have one quarter, one half, and three quarters. But in open type typefaces, you can see there's a lot more fractions that come standard with the typeface. But what if I wanted to make fractions of numbers like this? Obviously, that doesn't come standard with the typeface. But I could go to the character settings in my control panel and just click on superscript. But it's not really the same thing. You can see that it's taking this selected numerator and making it way too light for the rest of the typeface, but also too small as compared to the rest of the standard fractions that come with the typeface. So that's not going to do. Let me undo what I just did with these fractions. I'm going to hit Command Z or Control Z to get back to where I started. And now I'm just going to select this entire line of fractions, get my glyphs panel out of the way, and open my character panel. I'm going to go under the options menu to open type and choose fractions. And it's going to make all of these into real fractions. You can see it's making the numbers the same size as the standard fractions that come with the typeface, but also the slash is going at the right angle and is the right weight. So you can literally make any fraction that you want using open type. But what if I wanted a whole number followed by a fraction? Like maybe I want this to be 1 and 31 64ths. Well, I'm going to select the 31 64ths, go under the options menu to open type, fractions, and now I have a real fraction. Let me scroll down my page a little bit, and we're going to talk about ordinals. What's an ordinal? Well, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. It's the order of things. And sometimes when ordinals get typed, they use characters after the number. So it would be for first, 1ST, for second, 2ND, for third, 3RD, and so on and so forth. Well, usually ordinals are supposed to be smaller and raised up. So if I select one of these ordinals, and I go under my options menu to open type and choose ordinals, you're going to see that it actually does make it smaller and raises it up. It's not the same thing as superscript in that it's the right size for an ordinal and it's also the right weight. It is actually using substitute glyphs that are smaller yet the right weight as compared to the rest of the typeface. Let me select the next line and we're going to talk about swashes which are really quite elegant. It adds a little swoosh to some of the characters that makes it a lot more beautiful. It's great for things like 
invitations and it exists in open type for some of the italic open type typefaces i'm going to go under the options menu to open type and choose swash and you can see that the cap characters have these beautiful little swooshes on them and the s was actually made taller and goes slightly beneath the baseline of the type and the e is also far more elegant let me undo that so you can see the difference by hitting Command-Z or Control-Z. Big difference. Let me go back forward by hitting Command-Shift-Z or Control-Shift-Z. Very cool. I'm going to select the line that says Special Alternate Glyphs for Titles. A title is a large usage of a particular typeface, like for headlines, where you're using the type a lot larger. Well, if you make type larger, it may actually look too heavy in that size. So there's something called a titling alternate. I'm going to select that type and go under my options menu to open type to titling alternates. And you can see it spaced out the type differently and also made it slightly lighter. So when it's larger, it won't feel too heavy. I'm going to select the next line and talk about contextual alternates. I'm going to go under my options menu to open type and you can see contextual alternates is already checked. Yet it's in brackets. Anytime you see an option that's in brackets, it means that particular option does not exist in this particular typeface. So what can I do? I'll change the typeface. I'm going to go to the type family and I'm going to make it Garmin Premier Pro Italic. Now, you may not have this typeface, but I just wanted to show you what happens with just one of the characters, the lowercase v. I'm going to undo this so you can see the difference. I'm going to go under the Options menu to Open Type and uncheck Contextual Alternates, and you'll see that the v no longer has that nice little swoosh that was coming out. Let me reapply that. And you can see now the little swoosh is back. Let me select the next line. Real caps have the correct weight. Well, we already talked about small caps. I could just click on that in the control panel. And when I do, I have large and small caps. The characters that were already capped remain large. Let me undo that. Because I wanted to show you that there is a difference if I apply it under the Options menu of the Character Panel, Open Type, it says All Small Caps. So even if I have large caps in the selected type, it's going to make everything small caps. So it is different. One of the nice things about Open Type is that it will automatically superscript a register mark or a trademark. It's already using it in the smaller size. So I don't have to do that manually. Now, of course, I could make it even smaller yet by selecting superscript in the control panel, and you can see it got a lot smaller. Let me undo that. If I was working with chemicals, I could select the two and go under the options menu of the character panel to open type and choose subscript inferior. You can see that it's correctly making the two smaller it's using a substitute smaller glyph that half of the two is actually below the baseline that's the correct way to do chemicals i'm going to undo this i'm going to hit command z or control z on a pc i could also do it here but it doesn't come out the right way i'm going to click on subscript in the control panel and you can see that the entire two is now below the baseline not really the same thing let me undo that and reapply it under the Options menu of the Character Panel, Open Type, Subscript Inferior. That looks better. We're going to continue to talk about character formatting in the next lesson.